announce our special guest this afternoon. Please join me in welcoming, welcoming Governor Jim Justice. Now listen to me. You got you got to hear this. Baby dog. Baby, that's you, baby. It's craziness. It is. 
is so frivolous that today I said in the briefing or whatever, I don't know where it was, I said, I said, anybody that believes that, and you know, you know me, I mean, for God's sake to live if I was going to have to stay the state, turn baby dog's butt around to the camera for Bet Midler, you know, Amen. I don't say about anything. And I sure don't blow smoke at anybody. I don't do it because I don't have time to do it. I said today that anybody that believes that we can do without coal is an idiot. An idiot. I mean, that's all there is to it. And they're absolutely flirting with the total destruction of who we are. Now, y'all go have to listen to me because I'm up here talking and everything. But I tell people this all the time. Jimmy Carter, and most of you are way too young to remember Jimmy Carter. But Jimmy Carter appeared in his presidential addresses on nightly news or whatever it was in a blue jean suit or a leisure suit. Literally, on top of all of that, when Jimmy Carter was in office, we had given away the Panama Canal. We deregulated a lot of stuff on oil and gas. We absolutely had 100 hostages in Iran. We had almost 20% inflation and interest rates. Now think about all this stuff. We had boycotted the Olympics. We had a Russian grain embargo going on, and Russia, which was the Soviet Union, was absolutely invading Afghanistan. We couldn't do doodly about anything. Our allies were scared to death. The Soviet Union was on the march like nobody's business. And literally, literally, in just a matter of a very, very few years, Ronald Reagan came in office and Gorbachev was standing in front of the Berlin Wall saying, Gorbachev, tear down this wall. I think the whole Soviet Union collapsed. And what I tell you this for is just this. The very people that are out there in the wilderness saying, we can do without coal, we can do without coal to today, we're going we're to hit, we're going to hit, we're going to hit at it until absolutely we give. Those very people, whether they be the AOCs or the Joe Bidens or Bernie Sanders or whomever it may be, is leading this charge and everything, how do we know? We can't be the Soviet Union. How do we know that we're invincible? Because we're not. We're not invincible as a nation. Now you can say what you want, but tomorrow we can awaken to something really bad. We're watching the nightly news right now and seeing China and Russia teaming up. Right now. And the same people are still saying, but what we need to do is have energy dependence upon all of these other countries and all this smoke and mirror stuff and everything. I'm, I'm one that would say embrace. Chris Hamilton would say the same thing. Embrace the alternatives. We don't want to just turn our backs on the alternatives and everything, but we want to be smart. We want to really be smart. And we want to say that probably in all of our lifetimes that are here, we're not going to be able to do without coal. And what we hope, what we could hope and pray for, is that we could find a way that we could absolutely burn coal and utilize coal and be the greatest energy source as clean as clean could possibly be. And if we don't, if we don't, when the right time comes, whether it be decades away or wherever it may be, transition to something that makes us all better. We would all embrace that. It's just logic and it's just reason. So with all of that, now what's happened is our legislature, and I commend them, I commend them, you know, whether it be Ruby, you know, no matter who it, who it is, more, and no matter who it is that I'm leaving out, can't see, forgive me. You know, but no matter whom, I commend you. Because literally, at the end of the day, we've done good work. We've done really, really good work. So today,
stake in the sand. That's all there is to it. We're going to sign a bill. The bill is, is House Bill 3482. It's Coal Fired Grid Stabilization and Security Act of 2023. I feel awfully lonely up here. Can, can we not have some people come up? Yeah, look at, please come. Please come. This bill is to encourage development, transportation, and use of electricity generated generation using West Virginia coal. I don't know how to do that. House bill, I'm going to sit over here. Okay. okay. House bill 3482. Here we go. This is this bill that we just signed passed the Senate 31 to 1 and the House 93 to 3. You know, the only way that it could be better is it could be unanimous. This next bill I'm signing, it passed the House unanimous, I mean, sorry, the Senate unanimous. In the House, there was five people lost. House Bill 609. Obtaining approval for decommissioning or deconstructing of existing power plants in West Virginia. Now just think about this. This bill says that no existing coal, oil, or natural gas fueled power plant shall undertake any decommissioning or deconstructing activities prior to obtaining uh, approval from the Public Energy Authority. You know, I can talk about this all day. I would like to <laughs> Basically, in a nutshell, what we're doing here is we're just saying, just as simple as this, we're not going to just take some environmental whatever, you know, and shut stuff down in West Virginia. We're just not going to do it. Amen. I mean, we're going to have our public energy authority, which is our wisdom, now in place be able to tell us, and we're not going to allow that without that authority, so, or that without that approval. Again, it's more and more good stuff in my book. And I'm, I'm just going to pass these back. Now, I got two more. got House Bill 3308. This one is a little difficult to understand, but it's authorizing the PSC to consider and issue financing orders to certain utilities to permit the recovery of certain costs through securitization via customer rate relief bonds. Now, if you understand that, as I've read that, 
you know, y'all could have not made this as difficult. <laughs> yeah, right. But now, and, and as I've read through and read through and read through, this bill primarily was brought to us with the efforts of AEP and the Coal Association. But now just think about it, as I understand it, and Stephen, you correct me if I'm wrong, but as I understand this, this is basically just this. You know, that if we're going to do something in a negative way to the coal-fired production of, of, you know, that's, that's going on, then we're going to, then, then AP or, or the powers to be is going to have the right to be able to go with the PSC and then, and then go through a bonding process and where they can take the assets and really post the assets, go through a bond, Retire the retire the indebtedness on the asset, and absolutely use use that vehicle to 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 minimize rate increases to our customers and everything, and make everything work better. Absolutely. How about that? You got it. You got it. Okay. Now, I'm telling you, you know, y'all took me all the way around the horse and back, but I, we got there. Then we made. Southern West Virginia or a lot of our coal communities and so on like that. Wait, hold on. Let me let me just say this to you. And I'm I'm so terrible on names it's unbelievable. And I, I'm having trouble recalling the first name. And I and I and I'm disappointed in myself for not leading off by saying this to you. In my briefing that I just did, you know, Jordan or Someone walked in while I was in the middle of the briefing and handed me a sheet of paper. And it was a, a gentleman, his last name was Walker, 62 years old, coal miner and everything, Barber County. We lost him yesterday, lost him this morning. It's unbelievable how hard all of y'all and how hard people work and the risk you take when you get your dinner bucket and you head from home. And, uh, I mean, as soon as I handed it to me, you know, I, I said it in the briefing, but it just, uh, I really am sorry that I didn't lead off with that. And I, uh, so, y'all forgive me, and I hope his wife, Mary, that I, I surely don't know the family and everything, but I saw that that was her name. And uh, so please, please keep them in your prayers. Shoot, I, and I hate I messed it up. I'm sorry. Anyway. Yeah, I said this, I said this in the briefing, but coal miners, what do we owe those people? I mean, what in the world do we owe them? They've, they've saved our nation in wartime over and over and over and over and over. And literally, you know, right this minute, there's many, many that are thousands of feet underground, and some of them are in coal heights that they can't even sit up, let alone stand up. And it's tough, and we need them. We need them to do that work, because this nation can't do without them, no matter what anybody in the world says. And we lost one of our own today. And uh, that's really tough stuff to me. So anyway, let me, let me, I mean, you know, I've gotten, it's off track here and everything. House Bill 3303 is closed.
clarifying and expanding the powers and the duties of the director of the Coalfield Community Development Office. You know, many people probably have completely forgotten that we even had a Coalfield Development Office. You know, and surely have forgotten maybe that we had dollars in it that could pay a director or, or whomever a million nine hundred thousand dollars that was sitting over there in a fund to be able to promote, enhance, and make more things happen in our in our Coalfield communities and everything. And so House Bill 3303 is doing just that. Thank y'all so much.
his visions, all the time he devotes to our fossil energies, our coal energy, our coal fire, electric manufacturing. Uh, Governor, we just appreciate you so much for all you've done, your leadership, your vision, from your appointments you've made into the highest quality I think we've ever seen in state government, to your balanced energy portfolio, to your straight roads and bridges we are riding over today to get down to here. Uh, but we want to thank you for all you do, and I just want to echo what the governor said. I don't think there's a better class of American workers than what we have right here so much to you, it's unbelievable. But let me tell you just this. And, and we got gloves here. So maybe I can put on one of those gloves. But I'm not putting on a glove. I owe my life to this right now. I really do. You can't imagine. I mean, my grandparents never had indoor plumbing. My dad, my dad, an only child in a little house that had one bathroom and one bedroom. So the day that his, his mom and dad died, honestly, I owe my whole life to this. And so we need to get this all over your head. Who gives a you know what? I mean, at the end of the day, honestly, I've been so filthy, filthy, 